This program is brought to you by Honchkrow Wholesale. No more clipping coupons. All right, everybody, it's been a long time since I've been recording some replays, and especially of a tournament, a singles tournament, and especially of GSC Underused. I've been pretty busy, so I figured that I would record two tournaments since, you know, the GSC content has been lacking as of late, and it would be nice to do this on a yearly basis since all of these tournaments are scheduled around this time. The GSC Underused Cup is part of the UU Classic. I also intend to cover OU Cup, but for now, I'm pretty much, I guess you could say I'm a connoisseur of this tier. So we got as um as Ben or Zben, I don't know how you pronounce his name, their name, and Trevelyan. So I definitely know Trevelyan and I am aware that Zben has been in the past GCU Cup. So they're not a slouch. They definitely know how this tier works. And same goes for Trevelyan. Personally, I would say that I know Trevelyan a little bit more for playing this tier. That said, this tournament has already ended. <laughs> I'm not going to say who wins. This is the semifinals, and there will be a other semifinals set. I might actually record it all in one go. So here we go. First off. Oh, and of course... Let's not forget our tunes. They're going to be a bit low, but... Anyways, we got Mime lead and Quillfish. Mime is perhaps the only common psychic lead that can actually Oko Quillfish without a crit or anything. Um, but it's not 100% guaranteed. It's pretty much guaranteed. So Quillfish has to switch out here. Unless, of course... You're a madman. So, maybe I don't remember my calcs by heart quite well. Kadabra's another mod that can Oko Quillfish, but whatever. Trevelyan manages to get those spikes and is going to attempt to dodge a couple thunders. Quite a risky play, if I do say so myself. They're in range only for one more sub, but they're going to have to take a thunder, and there's the miss, but they could have used it much earlier than that. Kadabra's going to sub, and in comes Jumpluff from Zben. Jumpluff is one of two, the other being Electrode, Pokemon that can outspeed. So, yeah, Jumpluff is going to force it out with the Encore. Gets parried by the Electrode, but they both trade. In comes the Nito. The Electrode full paras, so will not be able to set off a boom. I'm almost certain that that was a boom attempt. The Quillfish is going to go down, so... This is risky, because the Kadabra might not have been able to KO the Nidoqueen there, and if Zben wanted to, they could have attacked or go for a Lovely Kiss, but instead they're going to rely on their own Psychic types, and we do see Swagger from Kadabra, so an interesting tech, as that's actually going to make Special Attacker's time much harder, and what a great prediction going to the Scyther there, figuring that... Zben would just switch to another Mon, and you can see that there's no leftovers recovery from that Scyther, and it goes for Double Edge, so it probably has Miracle Berry. I don't think it can Oko, and it might even be three attacks, so Trev is going to go to that Haunter, which right now is very threatening, but uh, Jumpluff Ploop proving to be a little bit more reliable than it might otherwise be, and that has to be a Hidden Power Ice. I've never seen Hidden Power Ice from Haunter before, but it's certainly a first. Pretty interesting. All right, so we see the curse from Hypno there. Hang on a second while I skip to the next tune. This tune is kind of crappy. Sorry about that. I kind of like this one better. In any case, you probably can't hear it that much. But we do see Curse Hypno, so... That's, that physical attack boost actually could have proven to be helpful for Zben. We don't know if this is a mono-attacking Hypno. That is to say, Curse, Rest, Sleep Talk, and Body Slam. 
It doesn't have access to double edge. And it's not particularly strong on the physical side, but once it sets up a couple of curses, it can be nearly impenetrable. Um, some Hypno like to use Shadow Ball or even Psychic alongside Body Slam. So we're going to find out which of these sets that is. So we see a return. I actually didn't know I could learn return, but it is a TM move, so that makes sense. As the Hypno's going to hit itself, but really, it doesn't seem, at least not for now, that Trev has much of an answer. He's going to stall the Hypno out until it will reveal whether or not it has that second attack. Honestly, using Swagger is extremely risky, especially because they don't know if... Um, yeah, I don't know what Trev is going to be going for here with the sub, the recover, the swagger, and the psychic. There is nothing more to be done here. You can't even use swagger on this hypno because, see, it had no effect. They probably didn't know this. But when the attack is maxed out, if you can't increase the attack further, then it doesn't inflict the confusion either. So the confusion, like, confuse ray would have actually been better than swagger in this scenario. Which is too bad. But we don't see if this Hypno is rest talk. And honestly, Zben has no reason to even attempt revealing that. They could just stall out these turns here. They're definitely going to be able to withstand a Psychic if there's no Spadef drop. But they were just barely in range. A full para would have been the ending there. Trev decides to concede, um, considering that it was just too much and the Hypno was no longer paralyzed, there was just not much to do, so I understand. Though, if I had to guess, there might have still been a slight fighting chance, because the Electrode is really fast, so even though its speed is dropped by 4, it could still be faster than this Hypno. But whatever, it's, it's fine. So... Ben is on the board. Uh, someone will have to correct my pronunciation later on. And this is, after all, a best of three. Yeah, best of three. All right, so we're going to see how this goes. Most of all, I want to showcase um, some of the teams, how they work, what's going on with these two team structures. And so far, we haven't really seen any normal resist on Ben's team. But there is one unrevealed, so that's definitely a good spot to have one. Um, overall, nothing out of the... Like, nothing that I would consider heat. Mm, Trevelyan's team is a little bit closer to that with the swagger strats, but besides that, it was pretty standard. A bit weak to ground, if I do say so myself, but that didn't end up mattering too much considering there weren't that many entry points for the Needle Queen besides the Electrode. So, game two. Trev is going to go with uh, Agility Pass, and I guess that's a good idea, considering it is, in fact, Miracle Berry. They're going to pass, go straight to Politoed. So, Politoed, not bad. Uh, now, off the top of my head... That is a good play, because the opponent is going to go to Granbull. Granbull is one of the few Pokemon that can use Curse and set up and actually withstand a couple of hits from, uh, say, a Quagsire. So going to Politoed is a little bit better, because it's more of a wall breaker. So that lovely kiss is going to go off, and we do, in fact, see a um, Sleep Talk immediately from Zben, the Granbull. And... Uh, Return was not going to Oko, and now it's definitely not going to Oko, but there's still a good chance of uh, dealing some damage here. Okay, so the Lovely Kiss is no longer in effect. That means that there will be a second chance to use it should this Granbull go down, but it's not looking very good for uh, Trev in this game. At least not for now. The Granbull is most likely not going to be able to live. Like, if it takes out the Politoed, then Trev will just bring in the next Mon and take it out. As long as this Granbull doesn't go past plus three, 
at which point it's going to wall really everything. And that's going to take out the Politoed here. Really scary, but Trev's going to bring in Haunter, which walls one of the few things that checks Baton Pass teams. And we do see a double sleep, so a second sleeper. Going to go straight for that boom. And this time around, I'm going to set up agility again, and Trev is going to have to take some chances. That boom isn't necessarily a bad play. That was a, a good momentum grabber there. The Quagsire is going to outspeed the Quillfish. Not going to Oko. Going to be uh, shut down. But again, that that uh, that Giraffe Rig is completely healthy, so a second shot at setting up is definitely possible. Grand Bull is going to go with a Curse here. Ooh, that's really smart. I really like that. Now this Grand Bull is slower, and I don't think it's going to be able to withstand an Earthquake from that health range. Not to mention that Quagsire Earthquake is way stronger than Politoed's Return because of the stab. So Giraffe Rig might have a second chance at setting up agility and passing again. Amnesia is definitely going to do the trick, especially because this Haunter isn't boom. So passing Amnesia to another Mon is going to assist the team greatly as the Quaggy takes a double edge. But it's faster, it can go for HP Rock. And, ooh, okay, yeah, it didn't look like it was going to survive there, but, um, hmm, okay, suddenly things are kind of risky here. But no wing attack from, the, from Zben's Scyther. So this Scyther has a chance to survive some sort of Thunder or Fire Blast, possibly. And they're going to pass straight to Granbull. This is a rest talk Granbull. Probably has hidden power ground as well. As the Needle Queen goes for Thief. That's pretty interesting. Good stall breaking move. As Trev is just going to use rest because there is not really much that Zben can do to contest this. Going to use rest again. The Nidoqueen Queen appears not to have Moonlight. It's probably the standard three attacks plus Thief. I mean, the standard Thief. The Thief isn't standard in and of itself, but you know what I'm what I'm talking about. So, so this looks like it's pretty much Trev's game to lose here. Like, there's nothing that's really stopping him from going through with all this. The hip, the Haunter was forced to just wall it and hopefully go for some risky move or trade and even if on the bright side Zven had managed to take down the Grand Bull, Hypno's asleep and Scyther can set up on it so pretty risky. Grand Bull's paralyzed so something can happen, there's the full para turn, first turn of activating it. But we get a second one, and that's going to be game two. So both of these players are on the board now, and they're going to contest for that chance at the title in the finals. We're going to see what's going to happen in game three. So, yeah, this team has been used quite a lot recently, and uh, it has been... Well, it has acquired a lot of infamy because of people not really appreciating agility and amnesia and the unpredictability of Baton Pass teams. Personally, I try my best not to complain about matchups because I feel as though it goes against my will to improve. That's not to say that it doesn't come with its fair share of brokenness. But, yeah. I actually made a video about Agility Pass, but it was more of a joke. I don't actually think Agility Pass should be straight up banned. That's that's my take. Everyone's free to have their own. I was thinking more of a complex band. So we have a uh, repeat, but this time around, Mr. Mime isn't so forgiving towards the uh, Quillfish. And probably a good read from Zben's end. Not doing anything too fancy, just going for the straight-up attack on that Spiker. And Trevelyan is losing, lost his chance at Spikes. And this Mr. Mime, we better hope for him is rest talk, otherwise that's going to be very, very crippling. 
I have the feeling that Zben's is uh, rest talk because of the way it was staying in there. Good choice to go to the Needle Queen, actually. Because of the para, it actually threatens it. Mr. Mime is pretty frail on the physical side and gets a super valuable um, thief on that Slow King there. So, so far, the ball is in Zben's court and they've been, you know, using, getting all of the momentum. Really good plays so far. So we do see a sleep talk from Trevelyan's Mr. Mime. So I wonder if they have anything else to challenge opposing mimes because having a rest talk mime isn't always the best. Um, as you see, they don't resist thunder and they take quite a bit. And a spadef drop can actually be pretty deadly. And Slow King isn't really a good answer to Mr. Mime, so... Especially since it's Reflect. I'm thinking that Trevelyan's team could be something like a triple Psychic team. Maybe there's a, um, a Nightmare Cadaver in the back. I'm not really sure, though. So, a lot of Thunder Mist is happening right now. And... In this case, you want to be smart with your... PP. Um, Zben has only used two rests, but in turn they've used ten thunders. You know, you want to balance things out the right way. It's kind of hard to, though. There's a crit thunder. Another one of these could be deadly. Crit thunder through a sleep talk, mind you. So that's like less than 5% chance of happening. And it happens, so... You know, GSC makes no sense. And we got Sleep Talk on Sleep Talk, but it's a little bit more exciting than your typical Lax War, I would say. Because things can really go south, and you do want to be smart with the PP you're using. Sometimes you might want to not attack. Uh, depends, really. You can win a speed tie any moment, so even from this percent, that mine is super threatened, even if it can use rest. And that's exactly what happens. Zven not only manages to take out the mime, but does it at full health. Haunter thiefing a thief Needle Queen, so Needle Queen may be able to click Thief a, a second time. Um, but I don't, I don't see that happening. I don't know. I don't feel like that would that's gonna happen. Good, uh, good call to make that switch. But what is Trevelyan gonna do with this? Is the question here. Switching from one Mon to another. There's only one Thunder left, so that actually was with a purpose there. Pretty good call. So, this is still winnable for uh, Trevelyan here. But it just looks to me like uh, Zben is doing really good right now. Hasn't been pushed to the point of having to reveal any fourth move. The third is obviously Rest. The first move... Besides Curse is going to be a normal attacking move. And we're going to see here if it does in fact have Sleep Talk. It appears not. It appears not to be the case. So now Hypno is pretty threatening. But not having Body Slam is pretty interesting. I kind of like the hacks opportunities. With the re return you get some extra power. But you can't, you can't really force anything to be slower than Hypno. So I don't know. Uh, this Slow King wants a crit, because a crit could put it in a bad spot. So it looks like the Hypno doesn't have Sleep Talk, because by now they would certainly have clicked it. So that would mean that they almost certainly, certainly have Psychic or Shadow Ball. So Haunter cannot wall this thing, not even for a single turn. So crit could be huge here. And Zben is just going to respect it. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, 
it's going to be tricky to find another opportunity to come back in with that uh, Hypno. And personally, I might have chosen to stay with the Nido Queen. Just because of this. Because of Hypno coming back in. Hip Nido Queen actually could have threatened the Mime there. Um, EQ does quite a lot. And we haven't seen... Like, worst case scenario, it has Moonlight and it's going to come back in, I guess. I, at least that's my opinion, but, you know. Now this Hypno is going to be a pain in the butt. And Trevelyan doesn't really have a lot of PP to use. Only t 12 um, Surfs left. Haunter. Slowking. I wonder if, if Trev has a... Um, Destiny Bond. They're probably trying to be cautious with their moves here. Again, same as before, a crit can be absolutely deadly. So Sven rightfully goes for rest there. Because at this point, the Slow King is running out. And so at this point, I'm not really sure if there's anything more that can be done. I really thought that there was a Kadabra in the back. Kadabra most certainly would have been able to threaten it, but no, we see a really poor matchup here. Three Mons that are weak to Psychic, and this Victory Bell, which is going to be able to do next to nothing. This return is going to hurt like hell. So they have one chance to crit. Oh god, oh my lord. Sleep Powder, that actually would have worked. And it missed. I can't believe it. Trev could not catch a break here. Uh, I don't know, man. Oh, there's the crit. Now you crit. Jesus. And mean look. Mean look, okay. This Slow King can take out the Haunter. Yeah, it needs one shot. But I have a feeling that Ben has another trick up their sleeve. Okay. Gets a crit, but of course, with the Destiny Bond, that Slow King is guaranteed to go down. That is the Sleep Talk Murderer. The Mean Look Assassin. And that's exactly the kind of damage I'm talking about here. So suddenly... Okay, yeah. There was a non-zero chance of making it, but I didn't really have the time to, uh, you know, say anything there. So, despite everything, I really liked how Trev played. That was really good. That was really good. Now, unfortunately for him, he's going to be eliminated, and Sven will be moving on to the finals. So, depending on how long this video took so far, only 20 minutes. You know what? We're going to go on to set number two. And this is between Big Fat Mantis and... Uh, I don't know who this is. Who's this? Who is this? I'm going to have to edit that part out. And Hydronics, okay. Yeah. You didn't see anything. Alright. Big Fat Mantis on the top. Uh, I consider Big BFM to be um, someone who's definitely close to the UU community. They've played their fair share of uh, GSC UUBL, so they won a tournament. That was pretty cool. Um, not super involved with GCU, but they definitely play and they definitely know a lot of the players that play it, so I'm, I, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure where exactly to put them in terms of level. Hydronics, I, I don't know personally. Um, being myself someone who's played a lot of GCU, I know a few people that play it, so, yeah. So we got a Granbull versus Magneton lead. Magneton is very uncommon as a lead, but not a bad lead per se. It could be a good anti-lead, I suppose. Going for a Hidden Power Ice, I would assume. With the Protect there, good. I guess that was a good scout, but you know, Protect Granbull. So that suggests that the Granbull is probably Hidden Power Ground. And on the other end, we have a team that feigns to be some sort of stall, but then reveals to ha reveals a Giraffe Rig, so. That's pretty interesting. Um, as you see here, this Giraffe Rid is going to go for agility. That was a good call. 
I would say. Oh, and then we have an agility on Hydronix's side as well. But too little too late because they just let BFM go for a belly drum here. And the Quagsire may not be faster, but the Politoed is going to be able to put this Quagsire to sleep. So all in all, this has been going in the favor of the Hydronix, but oh no, turn two wake up. Oh god, turn two wake up. That's awful. That's GG right there. Jesus. I've never seen a BP versus BP before, actually, so this was pretty pretty insane. They both played as if it weren't BP. Like, they, they had a surprise BP in the back, so that was pretty interesting. But Ton Pass be a bitch sometimes, though. And I, I hate Quagsire, man. I mean, I don't hate it in GSC UU, but I just don't like its face. So, hyd uh, wait, uh, Big Fat Mantis won. So, yeah. All right. So, Big Fat Mantis needs to win just one more game to move on to the finals. So, we're going to see if this is going to be the case here. Or if... The or if Hydronix has something to say about that. BFM leading with a Flareon. Flareon is... Another Baton Pass Mon, but it's crappy. Uh, I don't like it, and I especially don't like it in the lead, but whatever. It doesn't have any... Any... Any matchup in the lead position that would justify it putting being there. Nidoqueen is common. Psychic types can wreck their shit. The only thing I would sort of say is good, kind of, but not really, is um, Hypno. But not even. So, I don't know. I don't like that. And stealing the lefties on that Gyarados is going to be huge. So in comes a Lantern. Lantern's going to be very difficult to switch in, especially... Yeah. If you don't have a Hypno, that's going to be hard. Electabuzz probably does more damage to it, but still. Another Thief, but that's going to be for no reason, except it gets the Piloswine, so that's good. So there are definitely some special attacking recipients for uh, Flareon to do something, but I still don't... I don't know if I love it. So Blastoise. Looks like um, Hydronix brought a sort of semi stallish kind of team. Uh, Nidoqueen offensive, Blastoise very defensive, and then Electiva is somewhere... I wouldn't say quite in the middle, but you see it on both types of teams. So... Blastoise is really bulky and is going to be the main answer to this Piloswine. But that also means that BFM can capitalize with the Lantern here. So this may be a long series of turns ahead of us, folks. Blastoise coming in does not want to see any freeze, does not want to get crit. And uh, Hydronix eventually may have to start thinking about the PP that they are expending, the Surf PP, goes for a T-Bolt, gets a power on the Lantern, which will be helpful, at least somewhat, if they have something like a Granbull in the back. So we do see Rest on the Electabuzz, which suggests... Well, actually, I am i don't know what to expect, because I've never seen Sleep Talk Thief Electabuzz. I'm not really sure. But the Quillfish is going to get some spikes... If it can stay alive, it might even be able to deal some damage to this Lantern. A nice Sludge Bomb there. Say it gets taken out, but that means Needle Queen can come in. Something like that. Um, we're gonna see. So, the Electabuzz has Rest, Thief, uh, T-Bolt, and Pursuit of all things. Hydronix going for that... Uh, I'm just gonna go back that one turn for you all to see. It's asleep. It can't wake up. But... The message appears saying that Lantern's going to retreat. So that was a psychological pursuit. Someone uh, taken from Zakuru's book there. Quillfish coming in. And Quillfish is an excellent check to Flareon. Though it doesn't have the strong hidden power. It could have Haze. So it could even shut down the move here. Flareon going to deal some damage. But 
I guess it's all for naught at this point because this Flareon's as good as dead. It's slow. Might as well let it die. It's not going to be able to do anything, so... It took out the Quillfish, though, which at least is somewhat helpful. And if that's a double-edged Scyther, that's going to be a problem for uh, Hydronix. Curse. That's good. Frustration. And we're going to see exactly what set we have here. Okay. So, double edge, and the Grand Bull will not be able to recover HP back unless, unless, of course, it is a, um, whatchamacallit, protect, but no, it appears not to be that case. So, Haunter, gonna do Haunter things. That's probably a really good boom. Really good. Now Nidoqueen gets to pick off any Mon, nothing to switch in. Oh, well, actually there was, but they decide not to go to Hypno, okay. Uh, it's kind of hard to follow this game. Personally, I think I like... Offensively speaking, BFM's team... BFF teams have been very sound, but... If it weren't for the fact that Granbull is slow as hell... He would be in big trouble right now because he doesn't have a normal resist. So, barring some luck with that lantern, I don't, I'm not sure if they'll be able to handle the Grand Bull as long as Hydronix manages to find a good opportunity come, to come, for it to come in. And that can even be sacking a Mon here. Surf. That's very interesting, though. In this situation, I'm still giving the advantage to BFM because of uh, Scyther. <gasps> Is this awake? Was it awaking? Oof. Wait, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Two turns. Two turns of sleep. They could have clicked Pursuit. It lived at 1%. They could have clicked Pursuit and taken out the Hypno. And even possibly won a speed tie. Pursuit takes out the Hypno. It takes it out on the switch out and you have a T-Bolt to take out the Hypno with... I, I don't understand that play. Strong disagree, especially because you're not going to bring that buzz back in. Whatever. It was it was more effective at keeping the Scyther at bay. Now you have to deal with a plus two Scyther, though. Oof. Okay, that sucks. That sucks because it was hidden power. Or uh, it was wing attack, it's not even return, so... Still not out of this. Hydronix has a, a non-zero chance of winning here. Just has to get a good rest, um, sleep talk turn here. Because Surf is gonna put it in a bad spot. There you go. And after one curse, this thing is gonna be an absolute nightmare to face. Just needs to n avoid getting a second curse in while asleep. Or a curse right now. A curse right now is going to be the end. Oh uh, yeah, so is frustration. Now Lantern can surf, and I believe that the game is over here. Oh my god. Was that... Oh, hang on. Was that not in range? I'm gonna check. I need to check. I don't know my Lantern versus Grand Bull Calcs. <sighs> Let's see here. Lantern versus Grand Bull. It was in range. I don't know what is going on anymore. Why do? Why do I? I don't know. Whatever. I'm sorry. I, I don't understand that choice, but maybe... I don't know. I'm not gonna say 
plus one Grand Bull here. Okay, it is a roll nonetheless. So, you know, since it's a roll, I can understand going for Thunder, but I don't know. I guess considering how the odds of that roll could have been like 50%, a 70% accurate thunder is more worth going for yeah anyways i'm sorry if i'm i really don't know my damage calcs i was more upset at the electabuzz switching out turn but considering how stupid i am i I don't know, I could also be forgetting something here. So unfortunately though, things go exactly as I feared for BFM, so they lost this game because Granbull is a menace. It's an S tier for a reason, but yeah. All right, so here we go and on to game three. So just like last set between Trevelyan and Zben, this is going down to the last game. And we're going to see who of these is going to be facing off with the other person in the finals. This time around, we do have a change of leads. Mr. Mime, Thief Mime versus Piloswine. So interesting to go for the Ice Beam, turn one there. Probably, ooh, okay. Things are looking pretty bad for uh, Hydronix's uh, Pilo as it was in range of a Psychic after that Spadef drop, I'm pretty sure. Especially without the lefties, it's going to leave a mark. You know, you don't want it to have to use Rest. But the Mr. Mime is going to get parried, so... I guess that's a bit of a poetic justice, because now this Piloswine is threatening the Mime back. Of course... Probably best to heal up. Piloswine's really slow, so it wouldn't get another chance to Rest after. So good on them to do that. Sleep Talk Pilo is good, but BFM comes with another immediate threat right there. As as Pilo Swine only has a 33% chance of dealing that necessary Ice Beam damage. But now we see BFM with all of the momentum in the world. Plus two Hidden Power flying from the Gera. It's Stab. It's definitely going to take out that Haunter in one hit. But we also see... A, a Sand Slash come in. The Lantern is a really good check to uh, Gyarados. And yet another setup opportunity for BFM. So this is going very much in BFM's favor. Riding that momentum all the way home. Going to go with a plus two Earthquake there. Probably going to switch right to Gara if I were him. Yep. Blastoise has no stab move with which, or coverage move with which to hit Gyarados outside of the uh, Hidden Power Electric, but that's extremely rare. Granbull coming in here. And the Kabutops. This is the perfect threat for this kind of situation right now. Setting up a Swords Dance. Granbull better have HP ground. It appears not to. So, gonna set up another. Another Swords Dance, but. BFM better act quick. Go for something like Ancient Power. Maybe get a boost. Nope. It's a 10% chance. Still dealing non-negligible damage, I'd say. And the next return is really going to hurt, so they better go for something strong. Double Edge doing just slightly more, but at least the Grand Bull's forced to use Rest, so they're going to go for another eight Ancient Power. No boost. Another rest, another opportunity for an Omni Boost. And an Omni Boost might actually save this Kabutops. At this percentage, though, I might start going for Hydro Pump. Nope. Okay. Right, well, now the Grand Bull is completely maxed out in terms of attack and defense. And there's a crit. Oh my. Amukumara says hello, friends, as the Gramble takes out the Kabutops.
but not without taking a lot of damage in the process. So this looks like a second opportunity for something like Scyther or, or uh, Sandslash to come in. Passing the attack to Sandslash directly, good call. Could go for a sub and then a second Swords Dance, making it extremely threatening here. Just gonna go straight for the EQ. Unfortunately, Pilo Swine is gonna hang by the skin of its tusks. Just to break that sub, putting Blastoise in a perfect position to go for a Surf, but will it matter? Will it be enough? Probably not. There is a Quillfish, though. Okay. A Quillfish with Surf, so no risk there in uh, Hydro Pump missing. And this Electrode. It looks like Electrode, of all things, is going to be able to sweep. HP Ground Quillfish. Pretty interesting. Okay. Okay. So far, I've liked Hydronix's choices. And I really like this team by BFM here. This one's a very nice team. So uh, Electrode actually can threaten everything. Boom. Down goes that, and Granbull is basically the slowest mon in the game, so it's... If Scyther has double edge, just go for this... Yeah, go for the uh, sword stance there. Good opportunity. Another one, of course, because you're... You know, in case they get um, curse, now you're, you would be at a plus three advantage. Gonna go for hidden power. Uh, if they went for hidden power... Is that Hidden Power Bug, or is that HP Ground? Either way, they definitely go for that move because it's stronger than Wing Attack, so... Alright, that's gonna be the game. So, BFM is gonna make it to the finals of GCUU Cup. So now there's nothing more to spoil, except for who wins. Don't do that. I plan on making another video and talking about the finals. Anyways, guys, I hope that you guys have enjoyed. Um, honestly, these players have been showing some new sides of GSCUU. And it's much appreciated. So consider subscribing. I also intend to do more videos on uh, GSC in general.